What's up guys, hope you're all well and safe. Welcome to another tutorial in this complete Premiere Pro course. Now in this section, we are discussing the different color correction and grading tools we have available in Premiere. And in this video, we will be going through the different curves we have in Lumetri Color Panel. Now the curves are like the most effective and powerful color grading tool that you have in Premiere. But before we go into that, just one thing I wanna say is that you may have noticed that in every tutorial, I work on a different stock footage. Now. That's only because I want to give you guys some real life experience because obviously in reality you would be working on different clips and some might be dark, some might be too bright. So I just want to give you guys an idea of how you can work on different sorts of footages. So I just wanted to kind of bring this up in case you're thinking why I work on a different footage in every single tutorial. Now let's go back to what we want to do in this video. So in the previous video we looked at the basic correction and creative tab. So I'm just gonna give you a brief recap first of all before we go ahead and progress with this course. Now, I have this clip on my timeline and I've got my Luma waveform as well already over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I do some basic corrections and the effect of that in my Luma waveform. So first of all, I'm gonna bring my whites down and then the blacks as well. And now I'm gonna bring my shadows down too. And uh, now I am going to increase my contrast and a bit of highlights too. And I think that's fine, yeah. And yeah, I think that's fine. And now finally, let me bring my exposure down too. Yeah, very slightly. Okay, cool. Now this looks okay. And now I'm just gonna drag my temperature slider towards a bit of orange and then the tint as well towards some green. Yeah, cool. So. This is now before and this is the after I made some basic corrections so you guys can see the difference. Now at all times when I was making these changes I was looking at both the waveform monitor and my clip to make sure that I'm just not going in the wrong direction. So yeah that was just like a brief recap of what we did in the previous video guys. If you haven't watched that I would highly recommend you to go and watch it because we discussed in a great detail these corrections and the impact of this on our Lumetri scopes. So now I'm gonna reset all of this by clicking on this button and now let's go to the curves and look at the first one which is the RGB curve. Now the way this curve works is that the whole bottom region is basically your black region and the upper region is your highlights region. Now this is your dark node and this is your highlight node. So if you look here from your black node halfway through should be a 50 IRE which is your midtones and then the highlights. And if you want to change any of these, you can just put a node and change it. Like you can drag it or lift it upwards. Now, the top left corner is all of your bright region and then the bottom right corner is all of your dark region. Now, keep an eye on the waveform when I make changes to the curve. So if I start dragging the black node towards the top left corner, then the image has completely blown out. And if I now drag the highlights down, you can see that the clip has been completely blacked out. So guys, this curve is really helpful to fine tune the contrast and luminous levels. Now, let's see what I mean by that. So if you look at the waveform, you will notice that we are losing some details in this area. And as we know that the waveform works from left to right, so you can basically see that in here. We just have too much white in this area. So I can just bring the whites down by grabbing the top node and pulling it slightly and then moving my black node to increase some blackness as well and then bringing some highlights down too. So now you can see that the clip has got some contrast as well and we're not crushing any details anymore. So let me show you the before and you can see that we were losing out on this area. So we were crushing all of the details in this area and now in the after we have everything defined properly. Now let me go to the other clip that we worked on in the previous tutorial. Now you can see that in the waveform monitor that we are not crushing any details but if I want to increase or if I want to improve the luminance levels in this clip then I can simply mark my blacks by clicking here and then midpoint by clicking here and then my highlights by clicking here. Now I'm going to bring my blacks down and lift up my highlights without affecting the mids. So you can now start to see this is curve. Now, if you look at the waveform monitor, you will notice that it is perfectly spread out. Now, let me show you the before and now the after and the difference is very clear. 
Now, this S curve is not a rule and there will be times when this curve will become a complete mess. So, it really depends on the footage that you're working on. So, if I look at this clip that we were previously working on, the S curve won't be a good one for this at all. So, let me first of all reset all of the work that we did uh, before and now I'm going to try this S curve. So, I will bring my blacks down and lift my highlights up and you can notice that there is definitely an improvement in contrast but we are crushing all of the details in this area and you can see it in the clip as well as in the waveform monitor. So guys it really depends on the kind of footage that you're working on but in majority of cases in most cases the S curve will be your go-to curve. So guys this was your luminance curve now we also have other three color channels in here so you have the red one you've got the green channel and then you have the blue channel as well now you can use the color curves in the same way as we worked with the luminance curve so let me firstly bring up my rgb parade and get rid of my waveform monitor okay so now if you think that there is too much blue in your footage then you can just bring the blues down by grabbing the highlight node and you can see in the RGB scope that how it is affecting the blue channel. Now, if you see that there is too much of red in the highlights, then you can just bring the highlights down by uh, I'm dragging it from this point. And you can see the effect of it in the RGB curve that how it is pushing the highlights down. So, guys, I mean, you do have a lot of control on individual colors if you use this curve. And at the same time, you also have a lot of flexibility as well. So these were your RGB curves and your luminous curve. Now let's go ahead and look at the hue saturation curves. So the first one we have here is the hue versus saturation curve. So basically this is a change of saturation within a specific hue. So let me use this dropper and pick a color and straight away it has generated these three points. So the center point is the color range of the chosen area and then the two side points are the soft points basically. So if you drag the center point down, look how it's going to desaturate that specific color and if I drag it upwards, look how it's increasing saturation. So guys, it's a very powerful tool if you want to target just one specific color in your footage. But just remember one thing that you are targeting one specific color but not a specific area. So if that color exists in other areas of your footage, that I mean those areas will be affected too. Now the second one we have here is the hue versus hue and this is when you want to increase a particular hue in the image. So let me pick a color in the image and now if I drag the center point down you can see this whole line of different colors and now if I leave my center point which is this color you can see that the change has been made in, the, in my clip and my color has been completely changed. So guys again another very powerful tool if you want to target a specific hue and you want to change it but once again I mean I can't stress enough on this that you have to remember that you are changing a specific hue but it's not going to be limited to that specific area. So if that color presents in any other uh, part of that uh, of your footage then those parts will get affected as well. Okay so now the next one we have here is hue versus luma. So this is going to change the luminous levels in a specific hue. So if I now pick a hue in my clip, if I now pick a color in my clip and now if I start dragging this center point look how it's going to make this brighter and basically in the end destroying it completely and if I drag it down then it's just totally blacking it out. Now again a very powerful tool of targeting one color and then controlling that luminance level. So now the next one is luma versus saturation and this basically changes the saturation levels within your luminance. So if you want to desaturate some of the darker or brighter spots in your clips then this can be used very easily. So let me pick a color in my clip and now if I drag this all the way then I have basically as you can see just desaturated this and same is the effect if I move the center points upward so it's going to do the opposite and will increase saturation. So guys again a very powerful tool if you are looking to target the saturation levels within your luminous parts. Okay, so now the next and the last one is this saturation versus saturation curve. So I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. I mean, I don't really use this one, but if you have an already saturated area and you want to change the saturation levels in there, then you can use this curve. Now, let me pick up a color and if I start playing up with my curve and I've got the center point now, let me drag this up. 
So you can see the how it's changing the saturation levels. So again, I mean, up to you how you want to use this one. So guys, all of these different hue saturation curves, your RGB curves, can be extremely useful and helpful when you are color grading your footage. And I mean, these curves can give a really nice look to your clips. So guys, that's really it for now. I hope you found this video useful. But if you got any questions, anything you want to ask, feel free to drop that in the comment section and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. I'm now going to see you in the next video. So till then, you take care of yourself.